SPI, which stands for Success Probability Index, is a dream I've had ever since we first started Feedback Informed Treatment. And that was to provide a dynamic, updatable prediction about whether the client and I were on track towards a successful outcome. In the very beginning, we had percentiles. So it required the therapist and the client to say, whether or not we were performing like other clients in general. Then we developed the expected treatment response trajectories, which will still be present in all of the various systems and gave us the first real sense of whether or not the client was progressing like people who were on track towards success. The problem with that, and frankly with the percentiles, was it let a lot open to interpretation and it really didn't take into account what had happened beforehand whether we'd been on track or off track addressed problems in the alliance or not the success probability index does that it gives you a client specific prediction at each session indicating the likelihood of success if the pair continues down the same track. The SPI is like no other. It's not static. It's a dynamic prediction and it's based on patterns of ORS and SRS scores. Did they go up or down? We're sometimes looking at the average ORS score or we're looking at the improvement in that score and similarly with the SRS and it turns out that at each session how we calculate those numbers leads to better predictions about whether or not the relationship will end successfully at the end. All this is to say it's a fairly complicated formula but it really gives you the best idea about your chances of success with that individual client if you continue with more of the same care. I would say at the time that those were created, they were on the cutting edge. They were much better than having the therapist and client look at and try to compare themselves to median 75th and 25th percentile rankings. But there are limitations in the expected treatment response trajectories. And the biggest one is it doesn't take into account what you did in the last session. Did the client make progress or not? Did you address issues and concerns in the Alliance? You got a static graph and it was good for the time. The SPI takes into account the work you've already done, recalculates the probability of success. For some time, it's likely that the various systems are going to include both because we've gotten used to looking at the expected treatment response trajectories. But ultimately, my personal belief is that in time, most will find the SPI much more helpful, simply because therapists and clients don't live in a static world. They are constantly changing, adjusting and adapting. That's what feedback informed treatment is all about, adjusting and adapting. And the SPI takes that into account. In terms of utility, this takes a lot of the guesswork out of the interaction with the client and their feedback. You're getting feedback that takes into account the adjustments you made at the last session. If the adjustments you made resulted in a higher probability of success at this visit, keep going. If it didn't, then you probably need to reconsider and change something about the work that you're actually doing. So hopefully by having this dynamic prediction, it allows therapists the opportunity to both know when their changes have made a difference and when they haven't. So the question about limitations of the SBI, and of course, with any prediction, 
it's just that a prediction there's always a chance that that prediction will be wrong even when we're suggesting that the chances of success are 90 percent there's still a 10 percent chance that it may not work out so the SPI, the measures, none of that is designed to replace your individual experience with the client and your years or decades of clinical experience. Instead, it's meant two things. Number one is to augment that clinical judgment and possibility to facilitate our learning. And the second one is to sponsor a conversation with the client about their care. What do they think? Are we on track or not? What would it take to improve our chances of success? Am I the right provider? Is this the right care? Or should we be talking about whether or not someone else or something else might prove more beneficial? If it sponsors conversation with the client, if it intensifies that interaction and relationship, then it's serving its purpose as well. If, however, the SPI or even the measures curtail conversation, end it, are used as a fait accompli that this must be the truth, then we have a problem. In terms of integrating the SPI into sessions, I think one word captures the entire suggestion, and that is transparency. Talk about it the same way you would talk about the purpose of the measures. We're not assessing the client. We're trying to find out, did what we do work and do we need to change? Same with the trajectories, the graph, the red, the yellow, and the green zones. They're not a fait accompli telling us that we must end or keep going. It's designed to sponsor a conversation. Here, we just have one additional indice, and regardless of the number, what we should be doing is talking about it with the client. Whether the probability is high, I see that we have a chance of, say, 10% less than average of being successful. What is it we could change? What are your thoughts about that? Are you feeling on track or not? Should we give it more time or not? Even if the prediction is positive, let's say it says you're 25% above average likelihood of success. I would want to confirm that with the client. Does it feel that way to you in your life outside of this room? Does it feel like we're on track that what we're doing is making a difference in your life? And if so, then let's continue. If not, I really want to know about it. Where is the SPI most applicable? And the answer is in conversations with your client at the individual client level. Think of it as similar to the expected treatment response trajectory, those red, yellow, and green zones. Those really aren't useful at an agency level. They're really designed to inform the care the individual client is receiving.